Honorable Chairman, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of the State Legislature, it is a great privilege and honor for me to address this joint session of both houses of Andhra Pradesh State Legislature on the occasion of the budget session 2022 Our nation, our state have gone through a difficult phase in the last two years due to COVID-19 pandemic, being alert to the fact that the pandemic is not over, we all need to be cognizant of a possible recurrence of this menace. Bifurcation of the United States, five years of police paralysis during 2014-19, a year of economic downturn during 2019-20, and two subsequent years of COVID-19 pandemic have severely impacted the state finance. My government's steadfast commitment of extending support to welfare of farmers, women, underprivileged, marginalized and vulnerable groups has ensured that even during this excruciating difficult times, rural consumption and spending and the economy as a whole does not take a nose time. I am proud to say that owing to the impact of interventions of my government, the state has demonstrated a real GSTP growth of 0 0.22 percent in the financial year 2020-21. And as against this, the country's real GDP sank by 7.3 percent during the same period. During the financial year 2021-22, the state's GSDP at constant prices demonstrate a year on year growth 9%, 91%. For the last 13 years, for the last three years, my government has been making relentless effort in ensuring decentralized and inclusive governance. In coherence with the objective of decentralized good governance, we have embarked upon restructuring of districts. My government has decided to restructure the existing 13 districts in the state to 26. This new district administrative setup shall start functioning on the auspicious day of Ugadi. Telugu New Year, 2nd April 2022. We affirm our commitment to the welfare of the government employees who are regarded as the pillars of our administration. My government has implemented the 11th Pay Division Commission to the government employees and pensioners of the state with the treatment of 23% and flurry of other benefits, including the release of five installments of general surrounds in one go and increasing age limit for the retirement from 60 years to 62 years. This is despite continued financial stress on the government exercise due to shortfall in the resources primarily because of COVID-19. This bears treatment to our commitment to employ economy. COVID-19 pandemic had a deleterious fiscal impact while revenues were constrained. On the hand, the expenditure had to be stepped up for COVID-19 mitigation measures, protection of livelihood and ensuring the development did not get deleted on the other. After the subdued growth reached last year, the state economy 
is a projected to bounce back to three levels. The advanced estimates of state economy for the year 2022 show the overall growth at 16.82 percent at current prices. The per capita income has moved up to 2 lakh 4,778 from the 1,76,707 last year with a high impressive growth rate of 15.87 percent. Local global making Navaratnalu with STDs and localization. Amid the persisting threat of the pandemic, our steadfast commitment to extending support to welfare of the farmers, women, children, unprivileged, marginalized and vulnerable groups continued. Our focus remains on the high standards for education, health, agriculture, women empowerment and inclusive governance. The elaborate inclusive model of governance we have adopted under Navaratna rule to improve the lives of our citizen is improving holistic and merits replication by other states. We have implicitly adopted the UNS Sustainable Development Goals broad agenda of leave no one behind under the Navaratna rule framework wherein all the stages have been mapped into the state welfare schemes that are implemented on a efficient basis. Through localization of SDGs, my government is ensuring that human and economic development takes place in a harmony with the environment. The effective implementation of integrated welfare program has been facilitated by the transparent and objective mechanism of directly transferring the financial assistance into the bank account of the beneficiary without in leakages and thereby significantly improve the lives of our citizens. The village and ward secretary and volunteer system that my government has established are paying this dividend by making the extension of government service. Transparent, timely, and efficient. This innovative initiative has facilitated both employment generation and corruption free public service delivered at the doorstep of the citizens. Education. A literal genius, it is said, resembles all, though no one resembles him. Dr. S. My government has recognized education as the most effective tool to transform the younger generation. The focus is on utilizing every possible opportunity to develop children, youth to be globally competitive, strengthening infrastructure components in all government schools is being implemented for a period of three years, starting from 2020-21 under Manabadi Nadu Nadu, 15,751 schools in phase one have been completed with an outlay of 3,669 crores. In coming two years, strengthening of remaining 42,000 schools and other educational institutions will be taken up under this initiative. My government is spending rupees 15,000 crores in all these phases of Manabadi Nadu Nadu. Enrollment of retention has envisaged in the SDGs to improve the gross enrollment ratio my government is implementing program like Jagan Amavodi, Jagan Vidya Kanuka 
जगन्नाथना गुरुमुद्दा जगन विद्या दिव्याना जगन्नाथना बस्ती दिव्याना माय गवर्नमेंट हैज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड ए स्टूडेंट किट कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ थ्री पेयर ऑफ इनफॉर्म्स बेल्ट ए पेयर ऑफ शूज एंड टू पेयर ऑफ शर्ट्स टेक्स्ट बुक्स नेट बुक्स वर्क बुक्स ऑक्सफोर्ड इंग्लिश तेलुगू डिक्शनरी एंड अ स्कूल बैग टू फोर्टी सेवन लैक स्टूडेंट ऑफ क्लासेस बिटवीन वन एंड टेन ऑल गवर्नमेंट एंड गवर्नमेंट एडेड स्कूल इन द स्टेट अंडर जगह नाना विद्या काम का ऑन द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ दी ओपनिंग ऑफ द स्कूल इट इज ड्यू टू हार हायर नेट रिटेंशन नेट जगह नाना अमावसी जी पंपेट माय गवर्नमेंट हैज सपोर्टेड 44.5 लाख मदर्स टू सेंडर सेंडर टू स्कूल आर रुपीस 13,023 करोड़ हैव बीन स्पेड अंडर द स्कीम सो फार तो आर्टिस्ट डी इशू ऑफ माल न्यूट्रिशन आम द सेंडर माय गवर्नमेंट इस सर्विंग न्यूट्रिशन्स इन टेस्टी मेल्स टू 43.26 लाख सेंडर of classes 1 to 10 so far since 2019 an amount of 2640 crores is incurred under the jagannatha gurumukha quality of education realizing the global importance of english language and equipping our students for 21st century skill demands my government is working to provide quality english medium education to under the academic and administrative reforms initiated by the government to improve education outcomes by providing qualified subject teachers schools are categorized into six types satellite foundation school fundamental school functional school plus pre high school high school high school plus higher education for the first time in the country like in ever before my government is implementing jagannatha vidya divana scheme with its noble aim of ensuring higher education is accessible to even children for under privileged sectors and providing full fee reimbursement to every eligible student studying btech b pharmacy iti polytechnic and other degree courses by paying the amount directly to the mother's account regularly with dues on quarter basis so far an amount of rupees Six thousand two hundred fifty-nine point seven two crores has been credited to twenty-one point fifty-five lakh students. Similarly, Jagannatha Basanti Divana scheme is being implemented to provide assistance to the eligible students for food, bed, and hostel expenses. In a first of its kind initiative in the country, the government is creating rupees ten thousand for I I T I students 